colleagues, thank you all for coming. Um, our press conference today will be addressed by our Chief of Honourable Henny Saber. He will, he will be deliberating on what the Parliament has done for the whole year. So, Honourable Saber. Uh, thank you very much. I know it's the end of the year. You are all tired. The year was long. But as they say, we are surviving on the taxpayers' money, which is the public, the sovereign, the public that instructs us what to do, and the public that tells us what we must do and when we can rest. So for us, there is no rest. Uh, we'll be talking today about the parliament, or what they call in political science language, a parliament review. Parliament review 2021, what our perceptions are, what we have learned this year, and so this year, and how we are going to improve going forward next year. But I will divide it under two. First, I will try to concentrate on whether Parliament of the Republic of Namibia, the National Assembly, has achieved what it has promised the people on the 14th of February 2021, when Parliament was officially open. And we are going to go through that process and see the number of bills that were proposed that were not achieved and what, how we can rectify that. First, amongst the things is that, you know, when the President opened the Parliament this year in February, it was done virtually. And we complained to say that an elected head of state must never be scared to come to parliament and to share with people what the plans are for the year. So what President Kengop did was he was advised wrongly by Professor Peter Kachavivi, the Speaker of the Parliament, not to come, thinking that the parliament opening will be spoiled or it will be disrupted. It was wrong. I could see from Swapo members of parliament also that they were highly disappointed that their president couldn't come on the 14th of February to open the parliament officially. They were disappointed. Now, normally when the parliament is opened by the president, it's a constitutional thing. But it is stated, taking advice from the Speaker of Parliament, the number of bills that we expect to table and to approve and then to send it to the National Council. Sadly so, this year, there were a lot of such bills proposed. I remember combating of the rape uh, bill combating of the domestic violence bill. A lot of bills that were proposed, critical ones now that I can recall, but none of them saw the light of the day. Why? There were around about 31, 33 bills that we ought to have discussed and to pass this year. But none of them, except the appropriation bill, the national budget that we have passed this year. And it is such a sad case that out of the 31 or 33 bills, very important, at least we were supposed to pass half of it, 10 or 50. And that goes straight to the incompetence of the current Speaker of Parliament, Professor Peter Kachavi. As the main person tasked with ensuring that we pass bills for the betterment of the citizens, he was supposed to play a key role. Not only that, I also put squarely the blame on the majority party chief whip, which is Ambuka Amonera. As the majority party chief whip, he was supposed to ensure that most of the bills that are proposed were supposed to be passed. 
and that is a failure, a direct failure. If you compare, if you say COVID played a central role, if you say COVID played a key role, the issue is that the person. Uh, the issue is that you ought to have consulted all the chief groups so that we could look at mechanisms of how to deal with the motions in between uh, the COVID period. We had a very extended period of holidays because I think primarily Professor Peter Katsubi was scared and they used the issue of COVID as an excuse for us not to meet. Namibia is, for God's sake, a small population, 2.6 million people or so. Why would we struggle? Even South Africa, with a bigger parliamentarians, I think 400 or so parliamentarians, met successfully and passed a number of bills. Today, in fact, the South African parliament is meeting to pass the expropriation of land without compensation or just compensation today. If you watch from two o'clock, you will see that they are meeting. So whereas their parliament due to COVID is still working until today. In Namibia, Professor Gatsavi, because of his laziness, decided to cancel uh, or, or, or to let us go on the third or was it the second of, of December. That's nonsense, utter nonsense, at least because of the COVID period gap that was left. We were supposed to wait until the 20th, at least of December. Other professionals in Namibia, the civil servants, are working until the last day, 22nd, and then they only take leave for 23rd, 24th, 25th, and then they come back and, 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 and again on the 1st of January. They go and leave. But because of the COVID, the lost time that we had, look at the, the bill that took prominence the, the last week, which was now withdrawn, the Investment Promotion Board bill. That thing, we were at least supposed to sit and discuss it until the 20th of December. But Namibia has this lazy culture that Parliament goes already. 27th of, of November, we were supposed to go. Then they push it through so that we could uh, uh, take or accept or reject the names of the, is it the land tribunal that Honorable Carl Sledline brought. We have a very lazy parliament, and that thing that President Kengo wished to promote every December going to Swakopmund, that thing has started to put laziness in our people's head. Now, MPs are the most freest people in Namibia. In fact, we can say that MPs sometimes get a free salary because how do you then uh, april you are off then we only come back is it in, in august there after how many months and then you will only sit for two three months and now imagine in parliament only sits in a month 12 times only three days per week ah now in a month it's 12 times so basically the time is already limited whereby we could debate and have bills passed. Now, if you call the chapters of the National Council, we will say yes, but nothing from the National Assembly except the appropriation bill. And it's unfortunate because this is the design of an incompetent, ineffective Ninkom Pope. He is an unethical quack, Peter Kachavili. I think his time is up. Honestly, if Swapo continues to bring back Kachaviti in February, then it will be a city. Then we are going to lose two years. Last year we lost, this year we lost. The only thing that maybe Kachaviti did apart from the appropriation bill was to accept the recommendation by the Privileges Committee, which fired myself and, and, and Bernardo Swarbo, the leader of LPN. Those are the only two things that maybe they have done successfully this year. Imagine the whole parliament taking a long three, four, five, six months just to discuss a small matter, like the case of myself and uh, the Honorable Bernardo Swarbo, which we went to Supreme Court by the way and won. Uh, uh, by the way, on that thing, uh, you, you must call me tomorrow. The media, we have a.
for Professor Peter Kachavi tomorrow. Call me, maybe by 10 o'clock, then you will see what I mean. We have a small surprise package for him. The other thing, a parliament here, is the spending. You know, the standing committees, the chairpersons, luckily they are from Swapo. They are complaining that the standing committees are not empowered in terms of the finances, the budgeting. Now, Professor Kachavi, we spent two weeks with eight people in Spain for this International Parliamentary Union meeting. He returned, when he returned? Friday. No, last week, Friday, this past Friday, the 3rd of December, on your birthday. That's when Professor Kachavi returned. There were eight people. Imagine four. MPs and four staff members. And now those four staff members, amongst others, he has the director that works for him, Simon Zuga. And then the most useless person also, uh, Lady Akandetu, the executive direct, uh, secretary of parliament, also went along. <coughs> now I'm asking, I don't have a problem with four MPs. They deserve to go. They are members of IPU. But the staff, especially the executive secretary, leaving parliament for two weeks. I think next year, February, Professor Kachapi must provide a substantive report because I don't understand what role Lady Akandetu was playing. It's, it's just plain stupid. She, she just went to waste money with Professor Kachapi in Spain. I won't understand the director actually plays a special assistant role. Someone should have. I won't understand. If he travels with Professor Peter Kachavili, maybe he has to, to write draft speeches for him and so on when he's meeting for his intervention. Maybe he has to research and give input. But the whole lady candidate, she is the one underfunding the standing committees. Standing committees, when they traveled now for this, uh, that bill, the, 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 the other thing of the yeah, abortion. In the regions, they complain they can't reach all the villages, especially the villages, because they are underfunded. And there are more bills and motions that will be coming next year to the standing committees. And Professor Kachavi does not make proper budgeting for the standing committees. For example, on our case, Kachavi had to spend huh, one point. Six. He has to pay Sisa Namanza eight hundred thousand. They won the case that we went to Supreme Court, and he had to pay our lawyers <coughs> slightly above that amount. So more or less, it's yeah, access to it's one point six or so million that Professor Kachavipi has spent on a subject matter that he was supposed to sit down with us, talk and resolve amicably. Now he has spent that money, and he says. There is no money for standing committees, but he goes for two, three weeks to, to Spain. And it's the time, because it's a last semester, Professor Kachi was supposed to be here, especially on the closing date of parliament. It was so important, because now the genocide debate motion has gone, I think, to go back to cabinet, because uh, Deputy Speaker Kasimbo said it's for no, for no taking only. So we have debated that genocide motion between Namibia and Germany for three months, actually, September, October, November. Uh, three months, just for a note-taking. Imagine the jokes that uh, 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 Franz Kapofi is busy with. When he introduced the motion, he said it's for ratification. We must look at it and so on. But, but uh, when it came to, 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 at the end, he says, Oh, that motion is to go back by the way to the executive. It was only brought to parliament for no taking, maybe for our inputs and, and what they will do. So this is a, a subject matter. If we could not even successfully complete uh, the motion on genocide, we took wasted three months completely on that motion. People come and make jokes like Morin Hinda, uh, Peya Moshelenda, Paula Cooper, Modestus uh, Amuche, uh, they just came to make a mockery out of a very important bill. Now it is to go back. 
are the key things. The parliament this year has wasted time. There is no direction from the presidium chaired by Professor Peter Kachaviki and his deputy, Professor Lloyd de Kasingo. Both of them are lawyers. Uh, 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 Kasingo is a lawyer, the other one claims to be a political scientist. But people with professorship titles seem to have disappointed us. And I am actually appealing to President Kaingo. Maybe it is time that he let go of Professor Kachavi. I know Kengo wanted not to be alone as above 80 in politics. So he retained Vice President uh, Nangolo Mbumba, another useless person, and, and he also retained Kachaviki. But I think it's time that we let go of Professor Kachaviki. I think he's tired. He's now also become much more forgetful. He forgets easily. And I think Swabos are also frustrated, the members of Parliament of Swabos are frustrated because the rulings are always out of order. Kachavibi, every time he chairs, seems to bring parliament into disrepute. So I think it's time to say, Chayla, you have done a lot. You have been a vice chancellor at the University of London. You built UNAM. Uh, maybe he can become a, a chicken professor. Or... Last time I heard he took farms from the University of Namibia and he wanted to plant tomatoes and, and, and potatoes. So maybe he can become a potato farmer. I will be the first one to buy every month 10 cages of potatoes from him. Uh, but that one is clear. But honestly speaking, Parliament this year has failed uh, Namibia. And, and I will admit, we put some motions. I remember a motion on Negritao Dam by the Honorable Utara Motu, our parliamentary spokesperson. And Utoni Njoma and, and Maureen Hinda rejected that motion. It's a very important and critical motion that was trying to look at the investment opportunities, the viabilities, and all the uh, uh, things that such a dam, a big international dam, could attract to this country. We were supposed to look at tourism, how to revive tourism in that part of the country, agricultural projects. We were supposed to look at them, the fisheries, the aqua culture, all those things around Negritao Dam. It was so important. But a person like Maureen Hinda, who claims to come from that part of Namibia, Falkas, because they lost in the elections from LPM, she said she's going to block those things so that development does not come to Negritao Dam. I hope Namibians, if they see Maureen Hinda in Cape Manso at a service station, or in chess at the service station, there's about Petani. They must stop and ask him why they blocked or why Maureen blocked Negritao Dam motion. She is trying to take out and to revenge something that was supposed to bring millions of dollars to that part of the country so that we could start and kickstart and employ even 100 youth. She blocked it successfully, supported by Utoni Njuma. Utoni is a rich man, he will never be poor. Utoni's father is a rich man. He has how many farms and, and is living from the state taxpayers' money. They will never be, be poor, Utoni Njoma. He may even inherit all those things. But Maureen Hinda is the one that surprised me, coming from the background that she's coming from. You come and block, supposedly, development. We had another motion on comprehensive integrated youth development, but she will talk more about that. It was again by the same Mutara uh, Motu, then Swapos blocked it. The other day, President Kengo had a youth meeting. He couldn't answer basic things, telling young people, government is not caught to provide employment. Of course, they are there to create an enabling, uh, enabling environment. But himself, Kengo, is the one that provided youth that did not even play an active role in Swako Youth League, like Patience Masua and, and Emma Theophilis. A job here, but he's telling the other youth, now which youth is he going to provide employment for, and which youth are they excluded from our national budget? The Development Bank of Namibia is not friendly to youth ideas, especially if you don't have 
a house, a collateral. Namibia is very harsh compared to Zambia, Tanzania, Botswana, and even South Africa. Their youth policies are very friendly. And you keep, as long as you have good ideas, you can access employment. But here, yeah, it's terrible. So those are the things that I wanted to raise to say that our parliament this year achieved nothing. And as far as LPM is concerned, if we were a ruling party, I, if a speaker from 31 bills, possible bills, and you achieved zero, if we were in power, we will have told that speaker, the last sitting of the parliament, we will have fired that speaker also. Because that can't happen. And the ministers are so quiet. You see, uh, the Minister of Justice, even those have two bills combating amendment on the combating of rape and the combating of domestic violence. Ah, she had two, but she also got quiet. I would have asked her if I was the president, you introduced two bills. What happened to those two bills? Why is not even one? And we have a higher rate of sexual and gender-based violence. What if, why are you quiet? And nothing is done. She has gone quiet, even though so maybe the politics is too tough for her now. That she has ended up, she realized that it's not a kid's game. But as far as LPM is concerned, we pushed for two critical motions this year in Parliament. We were active, especially around land grabbing by former President Rufike Punye Pohamba and Sarah Kuhinkalwa, who took high income people's farm. We were serious and, and we advanced those two things. The plan of Professor Peter Kachavibi was to expel us permanently from Parliament. But thanks to God, he failed. He failed. The plan was, if Saibab and Swarp were out of parliament, parliament will return apparently to normalcy. The normalcy which they are saying is that people must be meek. No questions must be asked to ministers. And people must not object. People must not raise facts. You must just come there, sit like the guy from Christian Democratic Voice. What is that guy? Kandume. Just be, do you even know that there is such an MP? Kandume. He just comes once it is appears, comes maybe for 30 seconds. So maybe Namibians or Kachavibi wanted such MPs. There was a day that he was telling myself in the Swarbo in a meeting that, oh, you, you, have, you, have, you have come down. Even now, the other day, Minister Carlos Lehmann was happy. So we asked him, so Professor, you want puppet political parties in Namibia? No, we are different. We are not puppets. We are not like UTF abuse talker, who when Swapo talks, he said, eh, hey, those are good. No, we are not like abuse talker. He has disappointed UTF. He is a failure. I don't even know why UTF people don't complain. But we are not We are not going to be like UTF. We are not going to follow the route of COD, self-destruction. Now, Ben Olenga is back to Swapo. We are not going to be like CTV, Christian Democratic Voice, that party. Ah, useless. I think Swabo just gave him a seat to fill up opposition benches. We are not going to be, but we are thankful to other parties. Like Nuto really helped. They spoke. Uh, both, there are two people who are very active. Uh, Nef also, Mugolongo uh, and Yambo. The Nef, Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters, they were helpful, they were active. Republican Party also, uh, despite one person who was new. Uh, they were active. They, they did some really good work. And uh, from UTF, uh, chief of them, Dudu Morova, is very progressive. Uh, he has been very active. It's only abuse Koha. That one is useless. They must recall him and send in somebody. So those parties uh, that really stood behind us that did not condemn us uh, uh, were good. RDP, Mike Abekotora, our neighbor, was exceptionally well in terms both in terms of his content of, of, of discussions in motions. He raised few important motions on NBC and so on. Um, he has been very good. And, and we say Swano was also good, uh, raised important questions, and they kept parliament, even in PDM, their individual MPs that were really good like El Martinda, was exceptionally good. Uh, UPM, the two, John, is it Van Wegen, the other lady, they were 
also good, they will be kept. Then, even in Swapo, there were some MPs that were at least trying to shake off that character that we could see. Oh, they are good. But I don't know, they must replace all 63, maybe, as far as I'm concerned. Because they are a whole useless bunch of 63 people. How do you have 63 and you want to uh, suspend two people? So that's it. Even then, the 63, they did not even bother to say, hey, we are going to be in trouble because we are a governing party. No, guys, let's wait and have five. The chief whip of Swapo actually failed the majority uh, party's chief whip. He's supposed to say, ah, 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 let's prioritize these five motions and pass these five motions. Now, everything is now shifted to next year. And then I can expect to yeah, the paper order because they, when LPM came into parliament, the, the spirit also rise. So every day, the opposition MPs are asking questions. So you will see in a month there are 100 questions or 150 questions. It's because others are also trying to compete with LPM to say we are better than them. Of course, we, we, we are far better even than Swapo. That's why we are hammering them uh, wherever we have a chance. But the questions, the problems are a lot in Namibia. That's why you see the questions on Thursday, it's a lot. And then the motions from other political parties are also <coughs> a lot. So Professor Gachavi will blame the questions and the, uh, the, the motions by other opposition parties. Maybe in future, because this year the Chief Whips Forum hardly met. We never met actually. Maybe it's to see how we can trim down on motions. Maybe motions that will be a duplication. And maybe we can say, it. because some parties have that rule, apparently each uh, MP must put three motions. <laughs> that thing, imagine when you are five and then you have three. So now sometimes motions that are not that critical at that stage uh, in, in, in the country's historical development are uh, there. And then as a result of that, the bills are sometimes pushed back. And it comes back and pushed back. And sometimes some ministers maybe feel that they have to withdraw some of the motions. But we must look as in this thing of the order paper as chief whips, so that we can say, all right, maybe <coughs> each party, let's only have two motions and see. Uh, and then the ruling party brings their laws that they want to amend because there are really critical uh, bills that needs to be debated, like the domestic violence and the rape, because that, uh, the definition of rape is still causing pain in communities. And that one, I thought we would honestly pass that one this year. But the rest, like the income tax bill and what, what, those are things that are not so really urgent at this point in time. So next year, we are going to have our first workshop in January on some of the bills that have been sent over. That's what we normally do as LPM. And then we will see which ones we will ask to be prioritized. And also from our side, we only had two bills from Honorable Moto, and I also had uh, yeah, one on, on the expropriation of farm to work, the one that Sarah Winkelwa and Matilda took illegally from the income poor people. So I had that one. So next year, we will put very critical motions only because we can't just put motions for the sake of wanting to be in the media also. So we'll put and see how we can strategize with other parties to minimize and, and only have effective motions on the table. I thank you, Madam Dominga Ndala from the youth has something to say. Thank you so much, Honorable Chief. Well, my intervention is, is quite small. I think um, last week, Thursday, um, the president had what they termed <coughs> youth in conversation with the president, which from our side was a very good and progressive initiative. But I think the outcome of that uh, engagement was rather, uh, it did not yield any results. Uh, this is to say that um, the president was very arrogant in his response. Um, he called unemployed, 200 unemployed youth to the state house 
uh, to engage on how they can best um, in, in the, what he in, instead did was sort of to uh, to shine away the, the youth the, the the 200 youth that were invited to the state house he told them that he is not God and that uh, government is not there to create employment which is correct government is there to create an enabling environment a conducive environment so that employment is created but in our view in our view we thought that it's a very arrogant response because currently we are in a crisis the high, the, the youth unemployment rate is at 40 percent that is from that is that around about 250,000 youth are unemployed and includes unemployed graduates so we are saying as a sitting president in one that is at the seat of power you cannot give such arrogant response because there are some young people under the current economic status that they will never ever be employed and in our view we are saying that um, president Hagi Gengop has a lot of advices so why don't we then to make use or utilize those advices so that we can come up with better ways on how we can curb the high unemployment rate our view as the lpm we have always said that let's make let's utilize the agricultural sector so that we can sort of employ a lot of young people even on a on a very or, or, or even on a um, uh, lower wage but it seems like our cries it seems like our solutions has not been heard and the president has shunned away from from our solution just uh, from our suggestion sorry uh, two months ago, the Honorable Utara Mortu tabled the motion in Parliament uh, on the integrated youth strategy. So that is sort of to, to see how best we can um, how best we can solve the unemployment rate. That includes on how young people can be inter integrated in the social economic, uh, in the political space, and all the other strategic sectors um, in the economy. But obviously, uh, um, because the uh, the order paper at Parliament it was overloaded, so there was no time for her to sort of um, motivate uh, the motion that she wanted to table. But what we are saying is, uh, uh, the, uh, the president Gengob should be called to order. Uh, you cannot invite young people and sort of give an arrogant response that you are not good and you are not supposed to give them jobs. I think it's it's absurd under the current economic status that we find ourselves. In, even with COVID-19, we know that the unemployment rate has been exacerbated by the COVID-19. So what we are saying is, we know that young people are, should also create employment, but I think uh, the conditions currently, they are not conducive enough. Like the Honorable Chief Whip was alluding that DBN is not youth friendly. Uh, a lot of young people are always turned down. They have very good progressive proposal, but because of the collateral issue, they are unable to sort of fast track um, uh, they are businesses that, that, that they have in plan. So we as the youth mo movement, we are saying that uh, Gengob should be called to order and that uh, it's high time the government actually utilize or make use of the agricultural sector so that young people are absorbed into that sector and then more uh, jobs are, are, in, um, are created in, in, in that vein. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Oh, led by Antonio Labour. Mm. Labour. Yeah, Labour. Yeah, Labour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that then not mean there's a contradiction somewhere in the government? Because you can't create a ministry to create employment. The least you could do is at least report back that this ministry that was created to create jobs. I mean, what do you think? What's your take on that? Definitely, there is a contradiction. I think. The problem that we have in Namibia is our policies do not go inside. This president says this, the, the, the different ministries say that, so their policies are not coordinated, they do not go inside. So obviously there is a uh, contradiction. And also to say that that ministry also does not know its mandate. I think it's more, it, it concentrates more on sort of um, uh, collecting data of how many unemployed youth have in the countries as opposed to creating jobs for young people so that's why you see year in and out they, they, they sort of just report that they have produced how many jobs how many young people are, 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 are sort of what are employed but they do not report on how many jobs that they have created 
in the different economic sector of the country. So obviously that ministry has not lived up to its mandate and there's also a, a contradiction into government policies. That's why there's a need for government policies to coordinate and to coincide and to work together so that uh, um, uh, the, the ministry actually live up to its standard. Apart from that also we have seen that the, 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 the ministry is underfunded. I think it's very important that uh, during the budget debate, and we are appealing this to our members of parliament, that they sort of be vocal that the, the Ministry of uh, Employment Creation should be f funded with enough resources so that more jobs are created for, for young people in this country. Yeah, okay. and maybe the last one is, yes. what do you make of this, uh, I mean, a statement coming from uh, President Kaino and others who have uh, never worked uh, in the private sector before and who have been uh, on the government's payroll all these years. And then they come and say, no, uh, we are not good. Go and create your own jobs. I um, think they are out of touch with reality, number one. Obviously, they have been, they have been, they have been moved from one port government portfolio to the next for the past 31 years. They obviously see that they are also incapable of uh, creating jobs for themselves or or specifically for young people. So they are they are out of touch with reality and they, they are not also innovative in creating employment. So they are sort of using that uh, statement as an escape code of what they could not do when they were at our age. And now they are telling the same young people to go create jobs, knowing well that it's, it's, it's impossible, especially in such a country like Namibia that has a very weak economy and a very small economy. So I think they are very, they are out of, out of touch with reality and they should be called to order and if that's the case then they should vacate the strategic position so that young people sort of occupy those spaces because we believe that young people are capable and it's time that they, uh, and it's time that they, 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 they take over what is rightfully theirs because we constitute 80 percent or 60 percent sorry of the population and we are still the most underprivileged uh, uh, sector in, in the population so I think it, it, it doesn't make sense so it's time for them to vacate those positions and give it to those young people. Maybe those young people will then be able to create jobs through the yes. salaries that they will be getting from government. Yeah, on, on that one, I wanted to add. Look, you see, when uh, this year the national youth policy was passed, it was launched by the minister and the doctor, Dr. Mate and all those people. Now, now what, what normally must happen is that can have the policy in place, but it must be accompanied by a, a, a strategy. Normally, and that is what Utara Moto tried to take, comprehensive integrated youth development strategy and plan. Now, what you do is that she referred to there are a lot of economic, let's say, Minister of Environment, Tourism. how do we ensure that young people get access to? Tourism concessions, for example, wildlife concessions. Uh, how do you ensure and give young people even to open tour operating companies or have access to sources flay, dunes there, or Namib no cleft, or Doro Navas, all these things. And then you also now look at the other economic ministry, which is the mines and energy. Now, in terms of the EPOs that have been and the share of the uranium companies, the Chinese, that at least one percent must come from the young people up to the ages of 35. I believe that's a youth policy. So, now what you do is that because you have these economic sectors cutting across all ministries, you bring all their documents together. You must have an integrated youth development strategy. If you don't have such a strategy, then you are going to be failing. And the other area is that, look, since now these young people, uh, they finish school uh, because they divided this education system into these new things, it's going to be very difficult for some of them to access universities in South Africa, as it were, maybe five or ten years ago. Now, certainly, how do we then begin to look at the sport policy in this country? Because with sports, you don't really need to have a PhD. We know the number of soccer players in South Africa. Is it Shalulile? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Dion Hoto and, and Kadabua. Is it Kadabua? Mm -hmm. in, 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 
Nelson Mandela. Of course, Elizabeth somewhere there. But I think you will know him. You are a soccer player because you used to play soccer. So now you don't really need a, a first-hand degree or a diploma. How do you tackle unemployment? Is that? Or else you promote the academic stream, you promote professional stream, and you promote sports, uh, recreation, leisure, and so on. Now, one of the things is, 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 is how do you collectively have all, if you go to Ministry of Youth now and ask them what is their idea about tourism in this country? Because the minister must come out. The problem also is that our minister is very old and, and she can't maneuver this thing. She, minister, will come to parliament and say, no, a whole minister now going to independent stadium and cleaning the stadium. Now, a minister is supposed to provide strategic vision and mission for a particular ministry. Now, a minister goes and cleans the stadium. She is supposed to be in the boardrooms trying to get one million here, five million here, so that we can refurbish our independent stadium and have our players to train and to play here. But as now she thinks cleaning, removing weeds and what, what those things from the grass, uh, from the field is now apparently to be a major achievement. She made a full, if I was hacked that day watching news, I would have fired immediately. I would, have, I would not play entertain such foolishness, honestly speaking. Instead of coming, you see, in 2014, I wrote even an article about the sports with Bernard Swarbo and how we can use sports to contribute to the cross domestic product of this country. We wrote 2014, uh, the Ministry of Youth, that time of Jerry, had a sports conference. Conference. That time my friend Dolipula Hamutumwa was uh, one of the commissioners. I asked him this year, 2014, what is the, how many years now? Huh? Seven years. Seven years down the line. <laughs> Everything in sports has collapsed. Seven years, can you, at least a plan, a, a plan must, strategic plan must stay for 10 years. In seven years, it is collapsed. So I asked him, you were the sports commissioner, what happened? Ah, we put these permanent secretaries in, in these ministers that don't understand. They have no emergency area country sport minister that time. So things collapse. So it's the way we plan. South Africa is what I call it. Integrity development. In fact, it's what United Nations requires each country to have. Because you can policy is a tool for a bulldog, but how do you implement that policy is where the challenge comes. It's, that's where the solutions come. Now we take Mboma and Masilingi, it's a natural talent. They came. Now you see the whole government ministers now celebrating. No, it's not because of them that they reach that stage. It's a God given natural talent. It's, it's not them. You can't say now our sport policy has succeeded. No, sport policy has failed because one of the things that we discussed at the sport policy was the facilities, the infrastructure. Do you know that Oshakati Stadium only has is it four lanes or six lanes, and internationally it must have eight lanes. So we cannot even host regional games for Southern Africa in Oshakati. Just go and check that sport stadium. Now we have to go to Swapo or to Vendu, Vendu Independent Stadium. Has failed. City, I don't know the role of the ministry. City of Vendu did not also intervene. We had the mayor, the young mayor, put efforts together. Then you can have a good policy. Now that sports policy, maybe maybe they must get it. The minister should bring it to parliament next year. Organize not a conference, a workshop, just to refresh, so that we can start to plan for the next ten years. And that is what the minister she has failed. And the other lady. The deputy is a deputy minister, Kandemawa mm -hmm. Kaumas. She's a good person, a very friendly person. Emma. Uh, Emma. Very friendly person. But I don't think those are the people that will lead us to 2030. And thanks God for Maslingi and, and Boma that put athletics again on the map. But if we don't have a plan, we have young people, Shalulile. Apparently, at one stage, the school teacher was telling him, you. You are not going to, the way you are behaving, naughty. You are not going to make it after grade 12. And he told the teacher, apparently, no, but with my soccer skills, I will be something in life. Now, that guy is earning a good salary. He can at least, through sports, 
maintain his family. And that's what we want. So that maybe we can answer Harikindu's question of saying government is not God. Maybe he put it wrongly. He was supposed to be more philosophical and, and to try to bring it down. But for me, I, I don't really see it as an insult. It's maybe the way, maybe he was making jokes because he likes making jokes. And I always tell him, and people like him, when you discuss serious topics, don't sometimes make jokes because people will misunderstand you. And now I know how Namibian newspaper is. Maybe Sadius Ikela, he went to write uh, things, put things out of context, and Ohage is now in, in trouble. But that one is the key thing, integrated with the development strategy. Maybe we can go back to the minister and ask to craft a new one. Because otherwise, uh -uh. And, and we are too small a population. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Kenny. Today is your birthday. Yes, <laughs> happy, thank happy you. Birthday. So, uh, my question I'm just trying to find out LPM, since also the, the name in prior, my observation, you, you have been quite engaged with the question of farmers and mm -hmm. also landless people in the country. I just find it so difficult that. LPM is not able to engage the Ministry of Resettlement. You need just to... Parliament is one avenue, but I also mm -hmm. feel like if you also engage the Ministry of Resettlement and see to what extent you can maybe resolve some of this issue, some of those people who are thrown out of yeah. those farms or those land. So I, I feel like maybe that's also one avenue that as a party, I do feel like you also have a national responsibility mm -hmm. to engage the ministry. So I think you can as well use that yeah. uh, that space. The other thing also, you make, you make reference to some of the motion that you bring forth being brought by mm -hmm. a member of parliament. But I'm not really getting what are the points that were advanced for them to broke those motions. Maybe if you can just highlight some of those mm -hmm. things. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, for those two things. Thanks for wishing me a happy birthday. Uh, on, on the birthdays, we are working <laughs> very hard. Now, on the question of engaging the Ministry of, of, of Land, now it's true our primary focus as, as a political party has been agrarian reform, land reform, uh, and poverty, and how poverty is linked to land, and so on. So. We, I think our leader L Triple C last year tried to have a meeting with the Minister Carlos Ledman, but because of the politics that they are scared of LPM and so on, sometimes these ministers are unwilling to meet us. So what we do is that when they have regional visits and so on, we normally tell our people, the councillors, especially the constituency councillors, and the local authorities are very central in, in this land process engage them. Uh, but on urban land, we have been speaking to Minister Erasus Utoni to fast track the distribution of land in terms of signing where we cover. Remember, uh, uh, last weekend, uh, Marinda municipality where we cover gave some houses to the people and they have a uh, sorted state of affairs. We have to give, especially in Bento, is the biggest challenge in terms of production. The other thing is that you may know that the minister, Utoni Erastus, they are fighting us in the regions. So we also want next year to instruct our legal counsel so that we can take the, that act, uh, the, 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 is it the regional uh, councils act, to be tested because they have put so much powers in the minister. So even if in Bendu now, we say we are going to give 1,000 uh, urban or plots, it is still to go through the central government minister, which in this case are playing that game. And I have raised many times in parliament and other platforms about the kind of enslavement mentality that Erastus Utoni has. We have raised it to him in parliament on numerous occasions to say, for example, there is this thing, there is a 350 million land, Khobabes uh, municipality has called on investors 
So there is a track pot that investors want to start in, in Hobbes. And it's a project is 350 million US. That request that Hobbes municipality sent is until today unsigned by the minister that has I don't know why he doesn't want to sign it. It the land is allocated, it's only for him to say go ahead. So these are the things that we want to challenge now. Why must a minister of regional and local government be the one to have a sign a signatory right also? If process is clear, how does it live? Because I remember that time they, they did those things because Swapo had majority. They were governing everywhere, maybe to control theirs. But now they use the same laws to try to frustrate where other opposition parties are leading. And it's the same with rural land, agricultural land also. Kale just let us to approve a land tribunal. He proposed people like Baino, uh, Shivute, and the others. And these are people controlled, and they are members of the think tank, some of them of Swapo and so on. So even if our councillors have grand plans, the final uh, decision lies with the minister, and they will make life harder. So the only thing that we are also recognizing is next year we are going to have international tours. We have to meet certain countries that are friendly to us. We are going to start with South Africa so that we raise our people's right here. It's not only land, it's also food sovereignty, it's human rights, and all those things that accompany the question of the land. What Sarah did and what Kohamba Ifikepunye did, this was very painful, it's painful, and that's bordering on the abuse of the human rights of the indigenous and the marginalized people. So we have to go and meet even the United Nations Secretary General, if needs be, on this question. So it's a whole holistic thing, we, we can meet any minister anytime, in, including Hage Gengo. We wrote to him, I think twice, let us last year. He just simply ignored, even to acknowledge those letters. We said even this year, before Sona, by the way, we said, let's sit down and engage. He sent two ministers to us. We said, all right, let's meet, not necessarily let's take us anywhere so that we can talk about challenges facing Namibia. He rejected, he refused. Maybe they are scared to meet us because people like uh, Tuminga and Dala and Joyce uh, Modenko and Meki are very intelligent people. Maybe they will ask President tough questions and provide good solutions and they don't want to, to be embarrassed. So it's purely, we put two motions and what Utoni Nindoma said is that as long as a motion comes from LPM, Swapo will reject it, especially him, he will reject it. That one and Mr. Faustino, there's one minister, Mr. Faustino, what one? Uh, 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 Ngipondoka, this Morin Hinda, Evelyn Navasas, they have vowed if it comes from, whether it is beneficial for them, they don't care, as long as it comes from LPM. So you can see the animosity and the hatred that they have for LPM. That's why Maureen Hinda had to slept off my glasses. Mm? Because they hate us so much, the ideas, battle of ideas. So it's an ideology, it's a philosophy of LPM, as Kwame Nkrumah will say, that they hate. So even if good something is being rejected, that's a politics. And I think that's immature, it's very stupid, it's old school politics that they are playing. Because even of the Namibians that are going to be so, um, I think on that one, but we are not going to be discouraged. We said we will bring motions in Parliament, we are going to ask. At the end of the day, after five years, we are going to compile a book like this, huh? and say LPM brought 300 motions in Parliament, and they were all rejected by the criminal cabal, corrupt criminal cabal in Swabo. That's what we are going to tell the world. So, we will do our bit. The people elected us to be vocal on issues that we must be. So we'll continue to speak out. And then we are not going to shy away or be bright like uh, Christian Democratic boys to be quiet in Parliament. Just to uh, salary collectors, just come collect salary. Stay away for uh, two weeks, come and collect salary. Stay away. No, we are not going to. We are not interested in that. We will talk. And we are not scared. 
to raise any issue like some other parties do. Hmm? Some are saying, eh, but let's not be so hard. Swago is our mother. No, it's nothing like that for us. We'll be honest. So, like, Carlos and it's maybe a good idea. We'll contact ministers, we'll write to them letters and say, let's meet. And then once they reject, we'll come back and show you the letters. But we have tried, we have met um, cute, few, few, some ministers, by the way. Even last month, we, we met two or so. Uh, to see. That's why uh, on certain issues we resolve it. Conflict management. That's why it is not in public domain. The ones like Utoni Nuyoma, do you think he will meet us? Huh? <laughs> Utoni will never meet us. <laughs> so that one is already a known thing. Yeah? But others, they are kind ministers. Leon Jose is going. Kale, I don't think he will have a problem. Uh, Shimi also he doesn't have a problem. They are quite low. A lot of ministers, Yvonne, wanted to meet us also. So they are quiet. But don't meet us for wrong motions and bills to go and support you. We will not meet you for, for wrong things, only for correct things in our analysis that we're going to meet you. Thanks.